Wind power isn't working, Rod, is it? There's less wind, ironically, and we're not getting enough from it. Wind power's never going to work. It's never going to be something you can depend upon because you can't control the British weather. You know, if it, if it, if it isn't windy, then we don't get any wind power. And very sadly, we learned this over the last eight months because we now have a fuel crisis caused in part by the fact that the take-up was meant to come from wind power, but it didn't come from wind power because the wind didn't blow. I mean, wind power is absurd. Uh, it, it's OK as a small component of a renewable energy source. It's fine. Uh, but as something that you can depend upon to keep the lights on, to keep the radiators on during winter, it simply can't be done. Added to the fact it's also incredibly intrusive when it's inshore, uh, and on land, uh, and indeed intrusive as well uh, to an awful lot of wildlife on its offshore. What we need to do is invest, and this is this is where the government's got it terribly, terribly wrong. It set out back in 2019 with the intention of investing more in nuclear power, but for various reasons it moved away from that. Partly the involvement of China, partly the startup costs, partly Boris Johnson's absurd wish to to give it, get himself green credentials. Listen, Boris, you cannot get more green credentials than if you support nuclear power. It is the cleanest and the safest form of energy we have and the only one you can rely upon to deliver a, a proper energy source to this country. And it doesn't have to be uh, what we've been doing in the past, which is buying these huge spending enormous amounts of startup money, <clears throat> excuse me, on these vast nuclear power stations such as uh, Hinkley B. Uh, we, we don't need to do that. Uh, there's new technology and there's technology pioneered by British companies such as Rolls-Royce in small modular reactors. So you, you create these reactors not on site, they're not bespoke, they're created all together in one place and you put them around the country, small nuclear reactors which will generate loads of jobs and more importantly generate loads and loads of energy and it's by far the cleanest form of energy we have virtually renewable and unparalleled in its safety and the only reason that the government doesn't go along with it i think primarily is because the public is nervous about nuclear energy and it shouldn't be that's what I was going to ask, Rod. Why? Why, uh, why does the public still think that there's something bad about nuclear? Because the public doesn't understand the science, I don't think. Uh, and it is also perhaps, perhaps understandably scared of stuff it can't see and which it knows is dangerous. And radiation fits very much into the category, of course. But the truth is that if you look back over history, uh, all the nuclear power station accidents, if you add them all together, they have killed 32 people. You know, if you look at wind power, at wind turbines, since 2020, between, 2020, uh, between, between 2000 and 2020, 127 people have been killed working on these wind farms. You know, the, the, there is absolutely no comparison between the dangers uh, which which occur with with nuclear power and the dangers which occur with other forms of energy because the regulations are so tight. I think you're right. I, I think it is because of Fukushima. It is because of Chernobyl. It is because yeah. of the links to the war uh, from from yeah. nuclear bomb. Yeah. And and I think actually we need to be honest about that. We should talk about that uh, yeah. because the French rod have got over that. Yeah, and so have the Swedes. Uh, the French and the Swedes have both got over that. <clears throat> so to the Americans. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's not COVID. Uh, my daughter's just back from school and she's, as always, brought me the gift of a large cough, uh, which she always does whenever she comes back. No, it, 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 you're right, there's a Cold War hangover there, uh, which uh, morons in the Green Movement mix up. They mix up nuclear energy and, and nuclear weapons. You know, they cannot see the difference between them. And, uh, but you look at Fukushima, which was the last one that we can remember. Nobody did. You know, nobody did. Yeah. We've also let a huge <coughs> uh, fracking advantage <coughs> rod, haven't we, as well? 
We've also let... Well, sorry, I'm sorry, Dan, I was dying briefly for a No, few. no, glad you're here, glad you're still with us. Uh, we've let a huge fracking disadvantage go to waste as well, Rod. Um, again, yeah, I, uh, seemingly because uh, uh, of bad publicity. Yeah, yeah but I, uh, and this is where I probably disagree with you. I'm, I'm quite green on energy. You know, so I'm, you don't I'm like fracking? Terrible. I'm not mad on fracking, uh, uh, t t to be honest. Uh, I, I think it, it, in any case, it's, it's very temporary. Mm. There's, it's not going to yeah. give us energy for very long. No, indeed. Uh, nuclear power is. And the more that nuclear power develops, you know, we get into fusion energy and stuff like that. You know, 20, 20, 25 years from now, uh, with any luck, you know, we, we will have energy provided by the, the much even more safe uh, fusion power. But for the moment, you know, a dependable source of energy, one which we can afford as well if we go to small modular, modular reactors, is nuclear power. And the, the trouble is, it is stymied by any time you mention it. Cretins jump up and down and say, nuclear power, no thanks, and this is nuclear-free Wales. You know, and you, you think about that, when, when, when they say it's nuclear-free Wales or nuclear-free Scotland, what they mean by that. Because it would come as an appalling shock for example, to the thousands and thousands and thousands of people in those two countries who uh, are having radioisotopes used to cure their cancers, uh, to, uh, uh, to diagnose their cancers and for various other diseases. You know, it, it is an absurdity. And of course, those, those radioisotopes are made in nuclear plants. That's where they come from. Indeed. Indeed. No, very good point. Right, I'm going to bring the panel in in just a moment, but... Uh... I, I wanted to get your take first on the astonishing scenes we're seeing up and down the country at petrol forecourts. Where are you placing the blame, Rod? Because there's not actually a fuel shortage. There's not actually a fuel crisis. What there seems to me to be is a crisis in confidence, and I don't necessarily blame people for that, but, but who do you think is to blame for this mess? I think if we launched a campaign over the next two or three days, Dan, on television and in the newspapers to tell people that there was a crucial shortage of chives in this country, <laughs> by the end of the week, you would see fat morons queuing outside Morrison's, piling chives into the back of their Range Rovers in much the same way as we have seen with people at the petrol pumps. And I think someone's going to get clobbered pretty hard because... Uh, I've been watching social media, and it, it tends to be Range Rovers and Land Rovers, by the way, mm. uh, largely because they've got a big boot space so they can get all those jerry cans in. Uh, so it seems to me that it's the consequence partly of, of, you know, a scare, but partly also because we do have a shortage of road haulage uh, drivers, of HGV drivers. What it certainly isn't a consequence of is Brexit, no. you know, uh, which I keep seeing on, on social media, and it, it really begins to annoy me. You know, Brexit, Brexit has nothing to do with it. Brexit didn't mean that we... I mean, Brexit merely gave us the freedom to have a road haulage crisis if we wanted one. It didn't demand that we do so, you know? Uh, we could have kept on the foreign drivers until such time as we were able to teach our own people to drive. So, so Brexit's an irrelevancy in that issue. Uh, I, I, uh, apart from that, I'm not sure, Dan, uh, as, to, as to how short we are of uh, fuel. No, I completely agree about Brexit, absolutely. Look, look Rod, I'm going to bring in uh, our superstar panel. Let me introduce them tonight. It is the Daily Star columnist Dawn Neeson, the Conservative commentator Calvin Robinson and the author and broadcaster Amy Nicol. Amy, do you want to kick off? Hello. You can always kick off. Hello. Oh, you need to Hello. keep smoking. That's why you got a terrible cough. I think every week. No, that, that, that keeps it away, Amy. It's great. <laughs> That's um, soothing. Um, so soothing. First... COVID away, doesn't it, Rod? <laughs> so, firstly, on the wind farms, there is a lack of wind, but it's always windy next to Calvin Robinson, so we're fine here in the studio. Um, I know I'm not an expert in this what area. Does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not an expert in this area, but uh, my knowledge of nuclear power is pretty much The Simpsons, I think. Yeah. Um, but maybe that's why I feel nervous. So I would rather ask you about well, your comment that you just said about Brexit and the fuel crisis. Because although Brexit perhaps didn't cause it, do you not feel that a lack of Brexit would have solved it in the fact that we could bring in the HTV drivers to get rid of the crisis? <sighs> 
Not really, any because we could have brought them in anyway. You know, Brexit didn't tell us. There was nothing in Brexit which said, right, you have to get rid of all foreigners now. And certainly, I, I didn't vote for Brexit for that reason. I, I voted for Brexit largely on left-wing grounds, you know, mm. that, that, <coughs> that I thought that people were being exploited, um, and that immigrant labour was being exploited, and that we needed to level up the playing field a bit. It, it needn't be like that. So I think Brexit's a kind of irrelevancy. <coughs> Sorry. Calvin Robinson, do you want to come in? Sure. Um, good evening, Rod. I think perhaps we should Hi, tell people there's a shortage of common sense, so they might be clambering to find some of that. <laughs> no. um, I know you're against fracking, uh, but I think the reason we didn't go into shale is because of the Russian propaganda that was published uh, in this country. Do you think it's fair to say that, and do you think it's right that we've been letting foreign interference uh, dictate our energy policy? I think there has been a huge problem with foreign interference, both Russian and, when it comes to nuclear, China. Uh, I'm not terribly happy about the idea, for example, uh, of, of a power plant where, where the Chinese have their fingers on the on and off switch. You know, that, that doesn't cheer me up terribly. And it clearly didn't cheer up the Conservative cabinet very much either. So I think there is a problem there. And I think the, the great thing about the, the sort of nuclear power stations which I'm talking about is that they're sufficiently small to be not terribly expensive, but they also will massively reduce our dependency upon Russian oil uh, and upon Chinese interference in the, in the rest of our uh, the rest of our energy system. Uh, uh, this isn't insular. I'm not trying to be a, a little Britain Brit Brit about this. It's simply that it would be better for us if we were a bit more independent. Mm -hmm. Dawn Neeson. I was going to pick up on that <laughs> point actually. Um, <laughs> Oh, have a drink of water or yeah. a glass of wine, Rod, then. I've got a glass of coffee wine. here and it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> go for the wine, then. Um, I'll go for then. the wine, yeah. Honey. <laughs> Given that Russia have actively encouraged the green propaganda in this country and China have been actively discouraging the nuclear thing whilst shoving up their own nuclear power stations and coal power stations, by the way. Um, yeah. What do you think insult Britain, sorry, insulate Britain, <laughs> should be doing rather than gluing themselves to the M25? Well, this is the point, Dawn. I mean, you're absolutely right. And in fact, some Green campaigners, such as George Monbiot, who I don't always agree with on other issues, mm. are saying the same thing, which is the Greenpeace and Insulate Britain and Extinction Rebellion should be demonstrating in order for us to build nuclear power stations. That's what they should be doing. It's the greenest solution. You know, there is no other solution at the moment. There may be down the line in the terms of fusion power, uh, but they'll object to that as well because it's got a nuclear element in it, obviously. It... <coughs> Sorry about this. Yes, go on. No, I think that's a great point. A great point to end on. Rod, we're going to let you go. <laughs> get, get that wine down you. You yeah. get better. Uh, but thank you for being such a pro, Rod, and getting through that. We'll speak again next. Sorry about that. Um... Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.